We're going to talk about connected site tags and when this feature is applicable as you're installing Google Analytics 4 for your web property. I've seen some confusion around this and initially I wasn't clear myself on when to use it. Connected site tags saves you from having to add the tag manually to your web pages. It'll only work if your site is tagged with gtag.js. So if you want to use connected site tags, you'll go through one of three scenarios. The first one is you'll check your website to see if it's running gtag.js. The second scenario is if your website is running analytics.js, then you'll have to replace that code. So under a proper implementation, you should be running either one or the other, either analytics.js or gtag.js, not both. And you can tell the difference is when you look at the analytics.js code snippet, you'll find a call to the file here to that analytics.js file. And of course, in gtag.js, there's a comment indicating that it's the gtag.js code, but you can also see the, the file that it calls is gtag.js in that URL. Third scenario is if you don't have any tracking, you don't have any GA tags, no analytics.js nor any gtag.js code snippet. So when you're setting up a new GA account or a GA property, what you'll do is you'll grab the code from the instructions, the tagging instructions, and copy and paste it into your website code. And we'll go through each of these scenarios in detail. If your Universal Analytics property uses analytics.js, Google Tag Manager, or if you input your UA property ID in a field of your CMS, that is your WordPress, Drupal, Squarespace, Shopify, Wix, Weebly, or any other CMS, then it won't work. That's why if you tried connecting the site tags in the Google Analytics admin section, it wouldn't show up in real-time reporting nor in any other of your reports. This first method is very simple and very straightforward. Let's look at to see if our website is running gtag.js. In your Google Analytics, go to your admin section. And this is an easy way to see if your website is set up properly for connected site tags without actually going into the code. So once you're in this admin section, under the property column, click on GA4 Setup Assistant. And it'll walk you through this wizard to set up your GA4 property. And what you'll do is choose the first option, I want to create a new Google Analytics 4 property based on this Universal Analytics property. Click on Get Started and the wizard will give you a few bullet points concerning what you'll accomplish when you go through the wizard. So that includes creating a new GA4 property, copying basic settings from your Universal Analytics property, and activating enhanced measurement. This last point says it'll also enable data collection using your existing tags. And this is the connected site tags configuration. So if you don't have this option available, like if it's grayed out, then there are a couple things that you might consider or there are a couple of reasons why it's not enabled for you. One is you're not using 
gtag.js. You're you're using some other method to track to install GA, and that's that's totally fine. You'll just have to use another meth method for connected site tags, or you're using a website builder or a CMS or Google Tag Manager. I have the option available to me. So what I'm going to do is just click create property, wait for GA to do its thing and it set up a new property for me. If you want to take a look under the hood, take a look at the code yourself to see how this works. Here's what to look for. Look at your HTML code and find your gtag.js code snippet, which should be in the head tag. It probably includes a comment indicating that it uses gtag and you can see gtag in this URL here. You'll also see this line indicates that the tag is controlled by your UA property ID. The gtag.js code snippet must be controlled by the universal analytics property you want to connect to GA4. Actually, since we're in the code right now, here's another scenario. So let's say you have an existing GA4 property, but this site is not tagged to measure traffic for that property. So if we go back to our GA4 property, let's say, okay, for, let's say this is the, the property which does not have this website and we wanna add this website to that GA4 property. So what we'll do is we'll go to the admin section and if we're in the setup assistant, you can either click on tag installation or data streams, click right to, you can also click right to data streams here, but click on that web stream details and actually we'll go back to the code and what we'll do is copy this line of code and paste another one underneath it. But we'll go back for the web stream details and copy the measurement ID. We'll go back to the code and here we'll replace this with the measurement ID we just copied. So this will help us with the connected site tag. So this will send data to both your UA property and your GA4 property. Another option, instead of pasting in this line of code is to go to your UA property and adding the GA measurement ID to the connected property. So for, for the sake of this example, let's disconnect this property. And if you just remember this property ID 28874-2018. So let's disconnect this property. Yes. We're sure that we want to disconnect the property and let's go to tracking info, click on tracking code, click on connected site tag. So this is actually our, our GA property, our GA measurement ID, but we'll remove it. So in here, this is actually where you would paste the ID for the tag that we want to connect. So we'll reconnect that. Okay, GA has told us that it's successfully connected. Let's click this back arrow and click on GA4 Setup Assistant. And this time, instead of creating a new GA4 property, choose I want to connect to an existing GA4 property. So click the drop down, and if you remember, our property ID was this one right here, 28874-2018. So click on that, click on connect properties, and it tells us that we're connected again. 
So we can test out the tracking once more just to make sure. So we reloaded it. And let's go to our real time report. So there's our page view from about 15 seconds ago. And then if we go to this property, the one ending in 2018, that's us again. Let's go on to the second scenario where your website is using analytics.js to track for Google Analytics. And again, as we mentioned earlier, the way that you can tell your website is using analytics.js is that the code snippet here calls the analytics.js file. And it also uses these trackers for page view and for the UA property ID. So you are going to remove this code and use the gtag.js code from the previous scenario. And again, you can obtain this code by going to your UA property, going to the tracking code, and copying this code snippet to paste it into your code. Once you do that, you can use any of the methods that were mentioned in the first scenario. So make sure you review all the details and the configuration, the settings that we covered in the first scenario. Also, change any analytics.js code for tracking page views, events, custom dimensions and metrics, and any other elements that you're sending to GA to the equivalent gtag.js code. Take a look at the documentation from Google. There's a link to this page in the description and it'll give you examples that you can reference. This way you can ensure that all the data you're tracking will continue to report in GA. Now we're going to cover the last scenario where you don't have any GA tracking and you're setting up a brand new GA account. Go to analytics google.com or search for Google Analytics and it should appear as the first result. If you don't have an account already, this is the landing page that you'll see. So click on start measuring and begin to create your account. If you already have access to a GA account, go to admin and click on create account. We're brought to the same account creation screen. So when you create your account, keep in mind that your GA account could potentially encompass multiple web properties. So for example, your account name could be your organization. And within your organization's account, you could create GA properties for your website, a subdomain, a mobile app, or so on and so forth. So we'll give this a name and take a look at these settings to figure out which one you want to enable. I'm going to check off the first one because I want the enhanced demographics and interest reporting. We'll click next and set up our first GA4 property. Give the property a name and set the correct time zone and then you're going to click on show advanced options. Now this is where we'll enable the universal analytics property. Slide this toggle over to the right so that it turns blue. Select your HTTP prefix and input your website URL. 
Make sure that both of these options are selected because we want a GA4 property and a universal analytics property. And then we want this enhanced measurement for a GA4 property enabled because that'll automatically set up tracking such as link clicks and embedded videos as well as a few other events. Click on next and you can choose to input this business information, but it's optional. But we'll click on create and it'll bring us to the terms of service, which we'll have to accept in order to proceed. Instead of creating a reporting view like you did with Universal Analytics, we're brought to this screen with web stream details. We have the URL, the name, and measurement ID at the top. There's the stream ID, the status, and then the section for enhanced measurement. And this is the same enhanced measurement that we were talking about earlier when we were first creating our account and property. Go to the next section with tagging instructions. To add the analytics tag directly to your site, click on global site tag. Copy the code that appears and go to your HTML. Find the opening head tag and paste the code that you copied. Now, since we elected to create both a GA4 property and a UA property, Google should have created a connected tag for this GA4 property. And that's what we'll see here. So if we click on the connected site tags, we see this UA tracking ID here. So what we can do just to make sure is copy this UA tracking ID and just check that against the tracking ID created here. So yep, that matches there. And now what we can do is test our tracking. So if we go to load our website, we can make sure the tags have fired and then go back to the real-time reports. So first we'll check the GA4 property. It hasn't loaded yet. I think sometimes you might have to reload the page to, to get the event to show up. And there it is, yep. Zero minutes ago. Okay, now we'll check the UA property. And that should give us a page view in the real-time report. And there it is. So check and check. We had the tracking set up and we're good to go. So leave a comment if you're planning to install GA4 or if you've installed GA4, what your experience has been with the setup. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.